Oh snap, not me on a tiny ADV bike today, fam. Let's do this. What's going on guys? Chase on two wheels here at Mountain Motorsports in Roswell. And in front of us, we have a brand new 2022 KTM 390 Adventure. This might be the lowest displacement ADV bike that I have ever ridden. You guys have probably heard me talk about ADV stuff recently. I am a huge fan of this space right now, so I am super excited. It is a chase on two wheels first ride, which means we got to start it by seeing what it looks like and seeing what it sounds like. All right, guys, that's what it looks like. That's what it sounds like now. While I get my gloves on, let's see who is helping us out with the beautiful camera car footage in today's video. <laughs> this first start is brought to you by WBRGarage.com, where we take wreck bikes, we turn them into dream bikes, and we give them away to viewers just like you. If you would like to get entered into this season's giveaway, head over to WBRGarage.com to get entered for as little as $5 a month. Also, for the rest of season five, we're giving away two times entries. That's WBRGarage.com. Two times entries for the rest of season five. For as little as five bucks, you can get 10 entries per month. And back to the first ride. Alrighty guys, thank you so much for sitting through that ad. Uh, it really helps out the channel and I appreciate you doing that. Supporting the companies that support us is the best way for us to continue making the footage that you guys love. All right, guys, 2022 KTM 390 Adventure. This is amazing and very tall. Let's get this thing cranked up. Tip, very typical uh, for KTM. We got transport lock on. Uh, so, guys, I'm 5'10". I got a 32-inch inseam, and I've got my ADV boots on, and I cannot touch the ground. I, I can get one foot down, and I can get the other one mostly down, but I think you're going to be shocked <laughs> by... Uh, how tall that this bike is. Uh, now, as far as modes, we are currently in ride mode uh, for street. There is an off-road mode. We're, our course today is all on street, so we won't be changing the modes at all today. But uh, without further ado, I say we get this first ride going after I put my uh, phone in my thing. Oh no, I forgot my quad lock. Shit. Quad lock, I love you long time. So sorry. All right, let's... Uh, Let's get her going. And guys, before uh, we get on the street, I want to invite you guys to check out our Discord server. Uh, we got a Discord server full of motorcycle enthusiasts, just like yourselves probably if you're watching this video. Uh, if you guys want to connect with other uh, people over on Discord that are into the motorcycle space, make sure to go check it out. It's a cool spot. And we are off with the 390 Adventure. All right, guys. So like I was saying, I am really big into the ADV space right now. I honestly think my next bike is most likely going to be an ADV bike. I just love what you can do and the versatility that these bikes have. So when I saw that Mountain had a 390 Adventure, for one, I didn't even know KTM was making a low-level, uh, low-CC uh, adventure bike. But when I saw that, I was like, interesting, most ADV bikes that you see are much bigger. Like, a 650 I thought was the lowest you could get an ADV bike. And then I saw this and I was like, whoa, super lightweight ADV? Okay. And then when I was looking at all the electronics it comes with, I was like, hold on, KTM. Y'all making a serious low displacement uh, ADV bike? Let's do this. All right, guys, it is a first ride. Let's talk about first ride things. And first off, let's talk about body position. Now, seat-wise, I've got a pretty firm seat. 
Uh, right now, my legs are very kind of just hanging down. They don't feel uh, bent back too far. My upper body is very upright, and my arms are kind of in a middle position with these handlebars. Very neutral body position right now. I'm not stressed out at any point. The only thing that I do, and I am kind of curious about that I'm going to test real quick, is... I, I feel comfortable right now, but for an ADV bike, I would expect my arms to be up a little higher so that when I stand up, which you would inevitably have to do if you're riding off-road, that way you'd be comfortable if you're standing up. And uh, I have an inkling based on my current body position that, yeah, standing up is, it doesn't really work out for me. The, the handlebars are a little too far down. I would need... Uh, I would definitely need to raise these handlebars. And like I said, I'm 5'10". The standing up position is not great on this thing. But then again, like how much are you gonna stand up if you're on a low, such a low CC bike? Do you have to stand up a ton? I don't really know. So anyways, guys, like I said earlier, uh, there are different modes, but the other mode is off-road mode. So we're gonna stick into street mode right now. That street mode is going to give you all of the power. Uh, I believe it's 43 horsepower with 31 foot pounds of torque somewhere around there i'll have them on the screen here and i've ridden the rc390 and as far as in city stuff this engine is going to be ample to get me around traffic like it is right now so we've got no problem with the engine speaking of the engine we are on a single cylinder 372 cc so i imagine we're going to get a little vibrating i know that's going to be a shocker for a ktm but we'll see how punchy this little thing is around uh around the city right now i'm really loving the amount of power i've got with this bike it's nothing crazy you're, you're, it's not going to blow your socks off or anything but it is ample for in-city riding. I am interested to see how the highway goes because the highway is going to be a wholly different ball game, a wholly different ball game. Uh, but for right now in the city, it's great. The bike is super light as well. And with these handlebars in this kind of neutral position where I'm up top, like it, <laughs> the bike might as well weigh nothing. As far as wheel sizes, we do have a 19 inch front and a 17 inch rear, which, kind of makes me feel like this bike is kind of made as a you can i would call it a light off-road bike you know if it was a true adv we'd be looking at more of a 21 inch front wheel but i think maybe the ktm's pushing this for the the weekend adv guy the lightweight adv i don't think you're going to be doing any cross-country stuff obviously you could uh, and we'll check out the engine and the wind resistance on the highway or the wind protection, I guess you could say. As far as a scoot around city thing, and you got these little side rails that I'm sure on the back that you could uh, probably attach panty ears to, probably freaking awesome. I love how lightweight this bike is. Bikes for like, bikes that are great for city riding always have uh, a super lightweight and are super maneuverable. And this bike, this uh, little 390 Adventure is basically the definition of that. This is definitely one of the lighter bikes I have uh, I've ridden on a first ride. And it's interesting how light this bike feels. Like it's, it's almost like it's not there. I just kind of, I whisper to go in a direction and the bike just kind of flows in that direction very quickly. Scooting around traffic makes for a really fun riding experience. Like... I want a lot of you guys, I, I see this in a lot of videos, but I really want to get it across. I want you guys to disassociate uh, CCs with how much fun you can have on motorcycles. Yes, big CC bikes have their sectors that they're fun in, right? Like when you're really pushing it. The problem is you can't really push a bike the majority of the time you're on it. So it really changes up the dynamic of when a bike can be fun i think a lot of people overlook these low cc bikes this uh because you know 373 cc's it's on the lower end especially for an adv style bike but they are so fun they, it's, it's not it's not like toy fun but it's like close to being oh my god this thing is so light i can just throw it around i can do whatever i want to do with it it's a whole different experience, I guess is what I'm saying. Obviously, 390 cc's is totally plenty for traffic. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this thing. I'm going all around traffic. I love this so much. 
<laughs> it's that maneuverability, man. You cannot discount it. It does so much for a motorcycle. I would not be able to do what I'm doing right now on a bigger CC bike. My God, I've changed lanes like 15 times in 30 seconds. <laughs> oh my goodness, I love this so much. So for a city bike, I think it's clear this thing is freaking primo. Oh my gosh, that was great. I don't think I've ever changed lanes more in that section of the first ride than I just did on the 390 Adventure. Holy crap. All right, guys, we are coming up here on the highway. Uh, and on the highway, uh, we are on a brand new motorcycle. So I'm going to do my 40 to 80 pull, but I'm not going to be able to push it as hard as I can. Brand new engine. You got to be careful of that kind of stuff. I am interested to see how this bike does on the highway, though, because I'm a little worried. Right now, the bike is super light. It's super flicky. But on the highway, that could translate to a lot of vibration, and it could translate to not really feeling stable. So, kind of interested. We'll see how it goes. It's really hard to get over the feeling of having to tiptoe a 390cc bike that is this light. Like, typically when I'm tiptoeing bikes, my body, like, is naturally thinking, oh, you got a heavy bike, but right now... I'm having to tiptoe it, but the bike is like a featherweight. That is such a weird thing to get through my head. <laughs> it doesn't feel normal. All right, guys, uh, 40 to 80 pull. Here we go. We're going to let the traffic get a little ahead of us. 40 to 80 is going to be a little hard on this, so I'm going to have to start in fourth. And 80 is going to take a minute to get to. All right, guys, here we go. 40 to 80 pull. Let's go. There's 80, my goodness, took a little minute. <laughs> we are in a 390, so let's, let's be nice in the comment. Alrighty guys, on the highway with a 390 Adventure. So first off, let's talk about the wind. We do have a windscreen up front. It is doing a pretty decent job. I don't feel the wind till about my neck, and that's really helpful. So I am in that upright body position, which means if that wind was hitting me in my chest, I would get really tired really quickly. So we're not having that issue. Something I am noticing is that the wind is blowing and I am getting blown around this lane. I tell, all, I tell you guys all the time, this highway is notoriously really windy. So it is a good test to see like an extreme circumstance. Now, I think this thing could do a uh, highway fine but you're just gonna have to be keeping yourself in the lane. It doesn't feel crazy stable. I am getting pushed around a bit. Now, as far as stability going back and forth, it still does feel kind of light. I don't kind of feel locked in. Can it do it? Yes. Is it gonna be the most comfortable? Probably not really. Now, as far as uh, vibration, we were talking about vibration with that single cylinder. I do have a little vibration in my handlebars, but really not as much as I expected. Where I am getting a decent amount of vibration is in the foot pegs. I can feel my feet just vibrating. Now, we don't have cruise control on this model. I would like to see that for a bike that if people might want to do some touring on, they could. No cruise control, but luckily the throttle is like very light. So it doesn't take a lot. It's not taking a lot of energy to hold the throttle open here on the highway. And if it wasn't for keeping the revs low, the engine would have no problem keeping up with highway speeds. As you guys can see, when I get to 6,500, it starts blinking at me and telling me to slow down for that break-in period. Power-wise, no problem. You're not gonna have a ton of passing potential when you're up around 70, but I don't think this thing would have a problem with some sort of commuting, maybe like a 20, 30 minute commute on the highway to work, no problem. Maybe some very light touring, I don't think would be a problem either. But that stability is going to be where I really think you're going to find yourself being hindered for riding for a long period of time. Overall, though, really not that bad. Though, honestly, the, mo the biggest thing is st the stability here on the highway. I mean, you've even got the 12-volt plug for your phone for uh, to charge it or other accessories for a long period of time. I'm going to go ahead and get in that right lane, guys. And we will prep up to get off the highway on the little 390 Adventure. All right, guys, let's uh, 
I mean, we're not going to get to do a ton. There's a lot of traffic here on our turn, but get the bike leaned over a little bit. Actually, not get the bike leaned over at all. Well, this is sad. I kind of wish I could go that way. Just go into the woods. This thing would be really interesting to get off-road. All right, guys, well, after that pathetic excuse for a turn, let's jump to the camera car and see what the guys in the camera car think of the 390 Adventure. Thanks to our sponsor, Cardo. I like the idea of the RC 390. So having this is so just a dirt bike with a 390 engine, I mean, sounds like a good time to me. One of the least offensive looking KTMs in this realm. Not the ugliest one in their lineup. Uh, it's weird that they have cast wheels. All right, guys, in the camera car, thank you guys so much for your opinions. And thank you even more so to Cardo for sponsoring the First Try Series. If you guys want a discount on a Cardo, you can get a discount with the link in the description. We love Cardo. They are our favorite Bluetooth communicator. All right, guys, so let's talk about some stuff about the 390 Adventure. Now, as far as power-wise, like I said, we are kind of in the dulled down power mode. But I have ridden this 390 engine plenty of times, and I'm actually a big fan of it. I think it has a great amount of power for how light it is. It's kind of crazy how much power you can get out of such a light motorcycle and a light power plant. I personally have no problems with the power. I think anybody getting this motorcycle is going to have an adequate amount of power for what they're looking for. My God, the balance of this thing's amazing. Did you guys see that? I almost stopped moving. Uh, and had the, ba the bike balance with no problem. Uh, but yeah, guys, power's not going to be a problem for you at all. I mean, it is a 390, and you guys need to be ready for that, but the power is very controllable on this machine, and when you want to give it some, you can actually rev it out, and uh, it has some power for you. So I've had a great time scooting around traffic with it, and it's capable on the highway. As far as the suspension goes, uh, I feel like it's in a very neutral spot. I kind of thought... It would, I, would, I expected it, I guess, to be a little too soft, but after riding around through some traffic, I've had no problems with it, and uh, I think it's great for on-road. You know, obviously we're not off-road, haven't tested it there, but I also don't want to test the cast wheels <laughs> off-road either. Brakes-wise, we do have ABS everywhere. Woo! <laughs> uh, brakes are not bad for a little 390. That was fantastic. We did get a little bit of dive. Uh, but not bad at all. That, uh, that, was, that was actually impressive, if I'm going to be honest. One of the other cool things is this thing has cornering ABS. How crazy is it to have a 390 adventure bike with cornering ABS? I just think that's nuts. That's going to do wonders to uh, give the, all the riders that are grabbing this bike a lot of confidence in the turns. You know, if something were to come up. And it also has traction control which is one of the main things that changes. As you guys can see, MTC, motorcycle traction control, ABS, uh, and the power mode, which is the ride mode. I just think it's nuts that KTM's putting so much into a uh, small adventure bike. Like, I love seeing the tech finally get trickled down to these bikes. It's, it gets me really excited. Uh, as far as the gearbox, uh, we've been shifting a lot. You guys saw on the highway, we were chilling in fifth and sixth gear. Here on the roads, it depends what we're doing. I'm tending towards a higher gear because of the transport lock, the brand new bike situation. But the gearing seems to be great. I think you guys are going to have a really fun time uh, shifting up and down through the gears on this bike. I will say the shift lever, especially wearing these big ADV boots, is a little light. It's sometimes hard to feel if I've clicked through it. I wish I had a little more feel down there, but it is a really tiny bike so maybe the gearing is just so small you know it's hard to really feel stuff like that as far as all, how the gears have felt like how tall or short they are i feel ktm's got it in a really nice spot uh all the gears like i'm shifting when i feel like i should i really like where the gearing is at on this bike let's do a little bit harder of a break and see what happens whenever we get into this lane Yeah, this bike will bring you to a stop quickly if you need it to. That's awesome. I'm really impressed with, like, I mean, I was impressed with the RC390 as well, so I shouldn't be surprised. All right, guys, let's talk about the controls and the screen here on the 390 Adventure. Uh, you guys seeing the controls here are going to know from an instant it's a KTM if you've seen any other KTMs. Some of the big deal new ones, like the 1290 Adventure, have the updated switches. I actually prefer this setup. I think it works really well. 
and the buttons over here again the huge starter and the box there's a small starter and everything but then you got the big little chunk over there I'm not a fan of how much room that's taken up but at the end of the day i don't really care i think for a 390 you know an entry level adventure bike the buttons feel great i am super impressed with how well the feedback is on them uh, they feel way more premium than I, I think you would expect for a CC bike this size. Uh, handlebars feel good. Grips feel good. Uh, the levers are both a little light, but we have an uh, adjustable lever here and here, so that's the most important thing for me. I also love that they have the breakaway lever because this is an ADV bike. You're probably going to take it off-road. If you do, the lever is actually going to snap off. It's going to break at that point which is going to allow you to still have the rest of that lever to use to get home. Super good feature for a bike that's going to be off-road. Now, let's talk about the screen. My God, we get a color TFT dash on a 390. Are you kidding me? I love that. Also, I got to give mad props to KTM. They probably have the most responsive user interface when i click a button something instantly happens as it's supposed to i don't know if i've ever seen a more responsive dash so i am really happy with that there are some dashes these days that take forever for something to happen you end up just pressing buttons all over the place but when you get that instant response it it helps out the user experience so much so super happy to uh to see how responsive that is. I love that. And also, this dash is huge. Love that. I think KTM's using this dash for multiple motorcycles because there is, if the light shines on the dash right, you can see the um, cruise control light. Now, I don't know if there's an aftermarket cruise control thing or maybe there's a KTM power part that you can upgrade a cruise to get cruise control on this, but that'd be pretty cool. Man, why did that car stop? Why didn't you just go, bro? <laughs> just go through at that point also with the adjustment side guys one of the crazy things about this bike adjustable wp suspension up front this bike is full of stuff you would not expect to have on a motorcycle of this cc personally i think it's really freaking cool of ktm to be putting all of this awesome stuff into into a lower cc bike you guys see it you guys you guys are just like me you see the other bikes in the market it's like the high up bikes get all the tech and then slowly it trickles down and most of the time it doesn't trickle down all the way to the the 400 and the 300 cc stuff but that's where people are new riders and they need those electronic aids i i love that the fact that we're getting all of this like high quality stuff on a on a lower cc bike i think it's i think it's amazing all right guys so up here we're going to take a right turn into the uh little church parking lot and we're going to do a little walk around this bike and uh there's even more stuff on this bike that's already on it from the get-go that I think is absolutely fantastic that uh, I want to point out to you guys. Alrighty, get the bike turned off, kickstand down. Huh, that kickstand feels really cheap. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't have a heavy bike to hold up, I guess, but I don't know. See if it looks cheap to you guys. I don't know, something about it, weird. 2022 KTM 390 Adventure. I think KTM did a phenomenal job of taking the, the you know, the, the ADV bike that we expect, the look, and just shrinking it down. Check this out. Comes with engine guards. How freaking cool is that? I will say, when you get to this area, KTM engine, very, like, we, we expect that. But... You guys can let me know in the comments, because I might be totally off on this, but I don't love to see all the internals. I feel like there's a fairing just missing right here, because I don't want to see all the wires. I don't want them to be exposed to, to potentially get, like, grabbed on or something. I don't know. I, I get a weird vibe <laughs> from uh, from all that stuff. You guys can let me know in the comments what you think. I think the exhaust is kind of cool. It looks like a little canister, and I love that it's flat, so that way, again, if you're off-road... You hit, the bike goes down. It's not going to be a rounded thing that's going to be squished in. I love that they have uh, guards up here. They are plastic, I imagine. They feel like plastic. I can move them around. I'm going to assume they're plastic. Windscreen actually did a pretty good job. We finally have, uh, we have the updated 
uh, headlight here with a little DRL. I love the look of that light. That's more of the Super Duke vibe that it has going on. Here's one of the things for off-road that you guys are going to have to be careful with this thing, and it's why I feel like this isn't made for super serious off-road, but maybe light off-road. Cast wheels. These wheels, if anything happens to these wheels while you're off-road, like if one of these cracks or something, you're going to be in a rough spot, and you're going to have to get towed out of there. If it had spoked wheels, and maybe KTM has like an upgrade you can get spoked wheels on, but the fact that it comes with cast wheels makes me think like, eh, KTM's like, you know, you might do a little off-road, but not a ton. We've got that kind of exposed uh, swing arm, this whole little thing. I love this stuff. I, KTM's been doing this on a few bikes. I love that. I want to see that on every KTM. I think it's a really cool little look. I talked about the seat earlier. Seat's super fine. I've had a, I, I feel like it's a good mix of hard and soft. It's got a good material. I really like this material that KTM's been using on their seats. It feels really durable and really rugged. All right, dudes, that's the 390 Adventure. I'm going to get my phone out and take some photos for Instagram. If you guys are not following us, we are at C2WPix on Instagram. We always post photos and videos of the bikes we're riding and doing reviews on. We're also on TikTok at Chase on Two Wheels. So I'm going to go take some photos real quick to post on Instagram, and I'll be right back. All right, guys, those photos are going to be up on Instagram by the time you are seeing this video. So if you want to check them out, make sure to go over there and follow us. Also, I was taking the photos. Does it notice, does it look like this bike does not sit over very far? It kind of seems like it sits up really high. That would kind of worry me. All right, guys, time to get back on the little 390 adventure and do the steering stem lock test. And after that, we got to talk about who this bike's for. All right, guys, steering stem locked all the way. <laughs> I think we might have one of the top three uh, steering stem lock test bikes for this one. Good job, little KTM. My gosh, the maneuverability you have with this thing is absolutely freaking nuts. I think that's gonna that's gonna help people riding this thing so much. All right, guys. So we have ridden around on the 390 Adventure, and I've been thinking about who this bike is for now. Obviously, one of the people that I might push away from this bike is shorter riders. I don't know how much leeway the bike has with lowering it or maybe KTM offering a lower seat option. If you're under 5'10", you are going to be waddling on this motorcycle. Now keep in mind, like I said, the bike is super light, so even if you are waddling, it's not like you're going to be waddling this really heavy thing. But if that doesn't make you comfortable, then I would kind of push you away from that. Taller riders are going to have a no problem with this. I've, I'm 5'10", I got plenty of space before I would run into a size issue. As far as experience level for riders, I would say this bike is gonna be phenomenal for like newer riders. With a 390 engine, uh, it's gonna offer you plenty of uh, growth potential for growing and uh, enough power to keep you happy for a decent amount of time. You do see a lot of people on the, the 300s and the, and, the, and the old school 250s, you'd see people grow out of those bikes relatively quickly. I don't think that's going to happen as fast, if at all, on a motorcycle like this. I really love the 400 class for that reason. It offers a really good platform to start on and plenty of power to grow into. The ideal customer for this bike is a couple people. Uh, one, I don't think you're going to do too much commuting, you know, like uh, 30 minutes or less in one, in one run. Maybe that's a commute to work or something like that. But I think people riding around town this would be a phenomenal bike uh the maneuverability where the power hits with the engine i think it makes it for a phenomenal bike for that user case i also think you know you put a little bag on the back of this and i think you could like there's nothing you couldn't do in town and i love the fact that it's a little adv bike so like you have one of those situations where you come up to a road close sign and you're like eh I'm good and you just you're able to roll through like a unpaved road or something like that I think that would be a, this would be a perfect bike for that because you never know what you'd run into with a city and I also think if you're maybe brand new to ADV riding like I am this may be a bike that's really good for you it's got the the tech in it to do off-road stuff and it's really light and I'll tell you having a light motorcycle doing ADV riding is helpful because 
one thing that I have had to learn the hard way, while riding off-road, you will drop the motorcycle. It is an inevitability, it will happen, and having a bike this light, it's not gonna be a problem at all. You're gonna drop it and you're gonna be like, ah, I can pick it up with one hand, I'm fine. I think entry-level ADV, this bike might be phenomenal. And it's good for so many other things. You can buy it and have a really good time riding it all over the place. And guys, that's about all I've got for the 390 Adventure from our buddies over at KTM. Big shout out to Mountain Motorsports. That's the dealership we started at and the dealership I'm headed back to. They're the people that allow us to ride any of the bikes we need to let you guys know how they are riding for the first time. So make sure to show them some love. Check that description link to check out Mountain in the description down below. Five or six locations they have up here in North Georgia and they massive inventory. So if you guys want to come in, sell on a bike. And I've also got a discount code if you go into that link. So you're welcome. And guys, I'm Chase on Two Wheels. You guys make sure to ride safe, hit the like button if you enjoyed this video, subscribe for more motorcycle content, and I'll see you on the next one. Later. Outro crew, thank you so much for getting to the end of the video. Make sure to put OC in your comment. And then that helps me know that I should love you guys a little bit longer for getting to the end of the videos. Is ADV, is low CC good? Cause like you don't have the power to really push through stuff, but the amount of maneuverability you have with this thing is absolutely insanity. I can't decide if I would prefer low CC or a mid to high CC. You guys let me know what you think in the comments down below. I'm Chase on Two Wheels and you guys know. I'll see you on the next one. Later.